Yeah. Uh, I've been trying to continue on unsuccessfully with the next bit in this uh, sequence, the uh, security thing. And um, I'm not sure where I'm going to go just yet, but I just wanted to, before going on, point out um, that I created a club. So a group, let's call a group, <coughs> type of data structure in, in Windows, which can contain things called members. And I've added a bunch of uh, members to this uh, group. Actually, I should remove this one. Um, Uh, now, okay. Now, now this little message here is important. Like, there's no. This is not. Does not be, become activated for any of the members in here until the next time they log on. Okay. One of the members is called logon. So I'm not exactly sure how the logon logs on, but we'll see. Um, now you can't add, unfortunately, you can't add a group to a group. The only types of things you can add are these two categories users and um, built in security principles. Now, um, I, I have found a definition for this noun phrase, and I'll get to that later on. Uh, oops, if you um, do a try and complete the search, wall them, it's never maintains this thing here. Then here's a member, never heard of before. Uh, and a bunch of other, these other things. Now these things, I don't know why this says folder. However, uh, I don't think that's a folder, I think that's a, <coughs> that's a domain. The reason I think that's a domain is because Here. The well, there, there is the fact that that's written in this way, but um, just looking at that uh, token program, here. Um, here's a when I print token groups. One or I can like group group simple one. Um, name and attribute. To me, you have count as a key. If that fails, I return as a D. Otherwise, it's what I call account domain slash name. And how, how do I get no domain? Um, because this function you see how fast that was? 
I believe there's a reason for that. Uh, takes a uh, system name as the first parameter, and then I take the computer name that specifies a target target computer. Could be a remote computer. And what comes out, what I've called a uh, TCAR account domain is the third to last output value reference to domain name. Okay? So I have reason to believe that. Um, this is, it might be interpreted as a folder, but um, as far as that function is concerned, this is called the reference domain name. Okay, now there's that. Uh, and there are uh, several things of interest. One, is the existence of a, uh, a user called administrator. Okay. Now, that user does not show up on the logon screen. So, I don't know exactly. And, and it, it's never logged on ever that I've seen. And I'd like to try to log that one on. Uh, so as to gain access possibly to uh, this group. Although I have included authenticated the authenticated user's user. That's not a group. That's a user. So I'm not really sure uh, what that does. <coughs> no. The other thing is uh, I deleted the other one and it gave me a fine warning. So I took a picture out and order by date. Uh, where did I put that thing? Oh, here it is. I did, did order by the Dell Group One. Just make big. Uh, yeah. So when I deleted, oh, when I was deleting, oh, it comes. Don't, don't pause. Oh. Um, when deleting the group on the islands that I had, okay, which happened to have end with a 1007 in its SID. Um, delete the identifier and it cannot be restored even if you create an attack group with the same name. So this can prevent members of the deleted group from accessing resources that and I currently had permission to, to access. And so, all that's saying is that um, uh, these group things are unique. Uh, once created, uh, they can never be recreated in their identical form. Um, and so, uh, 
He's just telling you that. If you think you can remake it again, you're out of luck. In fact, you can. It's possible. Uh, but you had to know about special magic keys in the registry. Okay, so now I'm going to pause for uh, encode this bit and uh, try and figure out what I, what I wanted to demonstrate first and then continue. Uh, yes, <clears throat> I forgot one thing uh, that I just want to point out that uh, as far as uh, Process Explorer is concerned, uh, there are two sessions, two of this type of session, uh, existing on the computer. And um, uh, according to the help file, these numbers are never reused. And I'm about to log off and log back on again, and then uh, I, I will, you, will, you, you should see, you better see, that there will still be two numbers, zero, and then it will increment this to a two. So I will, <coughs> my session, whatever that means, will be two, but the, this, this zero which has multiple meanings. Well, uh, th th this means server server console logon or something like that. Okay. Uh, this is client. One is server, one is client. And the client sessions are never re never reproduced until the computer itself is rebooted. Uh, hard, hardware reboot. Okay. <clears throat> okay, um, just re logged on, and oh, you can see it immediately here. Uh, the, the current terminal services session has uh, inc incremented by one. Okay. Uh, you'll never see another one in this column ever again until the computer is removed. That's according to the help, and and, and so far uh, that 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 much is in agreement. Okay. Hello there, once again. <coughs> I am back. Uh, you'll notice the time. Time uh, differential from the last, uh, from the preamble, I guess, to this section. And uh, in that time, uh, <coughs> what I've been doing is adding another feature to my famous PS Talk utility, which I'm rebuilding at the moment. And um, that is uh, for it to uh, not only um, be able to uh, print out uh, the to token information for uh, the current uh, program or whatever itself, uh, but and uh, and for uh, a given process ID. But also to create a restricted token and print its information out. Um, the reason um, the, the reason why I want that option in here is because you can create. It's possible to create a restricted token. That you can't you can't use, right? Like um, if you disabled every every uh, uh, group included in the token, then you wouldn't be able to start any process. But you could still examine what's in the token and see what it says. So uh, the only 
the natural place. Uh, I thought uh, to put uh, put that code would be in here. Uh, I had another thing that in my unit test here I was making these restricted tokens, and I wanted to look at them PS token, but sometimes I, I couldn't launch the processor; it would fail. And I didn't want to keep you know cutting and pasting back and forth, so I put it in here. So now um, the program has well, this, this help is exactly the missing part of it anyway. I should say slash whatever. So uh, bare format that uh, uh, just uh, no fluff that just sort of prints out numbers and things. Separated by plus sign. Uh, and now, so the new thing, the new option I have is our rest, which means restricted. Uh, and um, followed by some other options. Now, one possible option you can put in is no. And that means to create a restricted token, but don't. You just don't uh, do anything with it, uh, and that that actually succeeds. And uh, I think, it's, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it succeeds. You, you get exactly the same token in out as you put in. Uh, it's not restricted. Well, it's not restricted in the sense that if you call this function is restricted token, which is how I determined that here, um, that returns false. Okay? Uh, otherwise, I can disable these are the things, you know, this is what I wanted to get to. But first, let me just get, show you the three options. You can disable groups, uh, you can restrict groups, and, uh, you can use name and sid, uh, and you can disable privileges. Okay, um, and you uh, you can specify. I've added that you can specify all. If you want to just disable all groups, or restrict all groups, or disable all privileges. Uh, and uh, to make things easy, uh, it's a uh, for the for the name. It's, it contains a type match. <clears throat> so if I want to, like, if I want to do something to um, this new group I made, the executive club. Uh, you know, club club would be good enough to specify for the name. I don't think anything else matches that. And, and so I could do something to just this one and not have to type all that in. As far as SID, it has to be exact. Um, okay. Uh, now, I'm going to change the ending to end of transmission. <laughs> In keeping with some of the stuff that I've learned, um, <clears throat> see, I got about 12 minutes on the beginning part. And then, uh, I'm, I'm up to about 20 minutes at the moment. Uh, now, I, I've been uh, trying to find definitions for all of these words that, that have been thrown around. And I've written some of them out here. I don't want to go through, through all of them um, at the moment <clears throat> uh, because I'm, 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 it wouldn't be of any help for this particular demonstration. Um, like, you know, what does represent mean? <clears throat> What's a log on section and all that stuff? Irrelevant for, for the purposes of the final following demo. 
in which case I would like to um, point out uh, where, where the help file does not, at least it, I've never seen it written explicitly, um, what it means uh, for a token to be restricted. That is, when does this function return true? What qualifies an access token? And they're only ever talking about access tokens. Um, uh, I can show you in the help file, or I can show you here. Uh, if you look in the uh, help file, in MSD, MSDN glossary under security, definition of token, the fruits says C access token. So token means access token uh, as far as security is concerned. Okay. Now, therefore, the tokens being printed out by my program are access tokens. And uh, uh, there is a property called restricted. And I will now tell you exactly what that means. <coughs> First, um, uh, as you can see, this is printing out everything. Now, there's one part where you can print out something called groups. Okay. And um, then there's another part where you can print out something called groups and privileges. Now, groups and privileges has is broken up into two lists. Um, now, th th this total here. Well, re re refers to the, the number of security identifiers for, that are found within the token for any reason whatsoever. So this some total, uh, and some of them uh, they call restricted SICs. Now, what I did. I think I have to rethink my name. My name is, is because this thing returns these things return something called a SID and attribute. Um, so print. All right, groups and privileges. Uh, okay, now this thing returns two lists of things called SID and attributes. Okay, so that and it's pretty clear. It's a P SID, which really means kind of a, a, a it, it's actually in there. I think, or call. Uh, it's not really, this is not really a pointer, it's a full array of numbers, I think. Not that it matters. <coughs> Plus attribute. Uh, yeah. Um, now, what I did is uh, uh, I took, I'm uh, trying to think of a, a way. To give that another type of name, and uh, the best name I could come up with was um, Sid Context, like a, a I mean, that's security identifier that uh, is part of a of a uh, what they call a security context because it has attributes. You know, it does something. It's a sort of has an, it has an effect. It's not just sitting there. 
Um, well, sitting, just sitting there does also have some kind of effect. Uh, but there are, there are additional things in those attributes, and so I thought, for lack of a better name, Sid Context, but maybe I, I should call this um, a uh, Security Context Entry. That's what this should be, SCE, Security Context Entry. consists of a security identifier and an attribute. Just like um, access control entries for an access control list, security control entry for a security control a security context list. If you like, um, now it's, of course, whatever you call it, it's a field, it doesn't matter. Now, what did I want to say about that? Oh, yes. So now, inside of the token, there are um, two lists. Okay. And uh, I'm not sure, it's 100% sure anymore, but uh, for a long time anyway. Uh, I was uh, under the I was uh, believing that uh, these things in here uh, are would would be found also in in here. Like if something's in if something's in here, then there must be a similar entry also in here. Now that seems to be true most of the time. However, I've seen contradictions to that. And I'll probably find one easily. Chrome. One of these Chrome things. And this is the one I was looking at. It's all the same. Try 2400. Uh, now you'll notice that everything here is deny, deny, deny. Everything's deny. Non-restricted, it will be the same list as what we just saw. That's always been true as far as I've seen. And then restricted, it's got a no. Now that that might be the only exception. <coughs> and I think that. Uh, Probably really put this in just for lack of, of having something to put in here, and they just put an empty one in. I'm not sure. Uh, no privileges, nothing. Okay, it's not an impersonation. Home by me. Uh, there's one restricted group. Everything else the same. Primary token. Now, this one is also diff different in that um, the SID context entry for user Allen has this flag set 10 hats. Well, guess what 10 hats is? <coughs> Um, and by the way, they call this flag uh, attributes mask or something. Pretty sure. I'll have to look it up again. Uh, now, where else that thing? It's in the MT. In my notes somewhere.
This is where I'm from, let me see. Okay, well, let me, I just gotta write it down in code somewhere. I'll find a comparison. It's the uh, SE group use for deny only. Use or use, that's a, that's also a, a, an ambiguity. See? Can. Now, I suspect that that uh, is not a coincidence. That this here attributes thing is a, is a mask. Actually, look, see, it says user and attributes mask. So that means um, whatever attributes uh, the other um, SID context uh, entry elements have are masked with that flag. If that were true, that would certainly turn all of these into deny only. Um, uh, security context entry. Okay. Now I've used up a lot of time, but now you've seen that. And now I want to show you um, an example. So suppose we want to um, First, let's just uh, uh, clean the group. Suppose we want to, I want to um, disable that group. Uh, yes. R equals and syntax DG. What was it called? Hmm. <laughs> that was like organization org. So anything that matches the letter org will um, be. I'm going to create a restricted token. Uh, which has uh, any groups matching this name as disabled. Okay, there are only a few things you can do. There are only a few things you can do with create restricted token. You can either disable or restrict. As far as groups go, with or SIDs go, that's it. You can disable privileges too. Okay. First thing I want you to note is that this token is not a restricted token according to that function is restricted token. Now uh, I can show you the code again. That token was in, was created. I could put a trace here if you don't believe me by calling this function create restricted token. Okay? But it is not a restricted token. Now let's see what I asked for would work. Now this is our, was already there. And here, or this one got disabled. Okay, but uh, as far as restricted and non-restricted groups, there are no restricted SID context things. See, no restricted SID. 
So all that means, all that is restricted tells you is whether or not there are restricted SIDs. And how those work is something you'll have to explain. But another thing we could do um, is instead of disabling that, I'll just restrict that group, put it into the restricted list. Now the token is a restricted token. And you notice that um, that group has not been disabled in any way. Uh, and everything else, as far as the regular groups is concerned, is identical. Um, except, I have one entry in the restricted groups list, and so therefore it is a restricted token. It's not an impersonation. Uh, it's owned by me. Well, it has my own restricted group. Everything else is same. Um, it's a primary token. It's owned by me. Everything else is the same. I changed some text here, but I don't think this is right either. Okay? So, end of lesson. Now that now you uh, you know what it what a restricted token is, without having to know anything else, it only means that um, uh, it has an element in a list called uh, restricted groups. Uh, and uh, that's a list of those security. It's a list of security and attributes objects. Uh, but the function actually, when you create a restricted token, it completely ignores the attributes part that you pass to it. I'm just wondering what I've printed it out at. Okay, so it just it just maintained what it already had, right? Uh, I didn't specify I, I specify nothing for this attribute because it it says in the help file that uh, the attributes specified in the function call are completely ignored. It just it just wants the SID value value. Okay. Uh, next time, I'm going to tell you what that means. I mean, how that affects the um, the if one were able to use that token, how that would affect its ability to access uh, objects. You'll notice there, there was no deny or anything anywhere in that. Uh, in that token. Yet it is restricted, and it is actually restricted in, in a specific sense. Okay, so see you next time.